All right, hello, welcome. We are ready to jump in to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, the sequel to the original Ace Attorney trilogy. So this originally came out in 2007 and was intended originally by the creator of the Ace Attorney series to be a complete spinoff with no relation at all to the original trilogy. So initially he did not want to do a follow-up and felt like the trilogy spoke for itself. Capcom came along and said, this makes a lot of money. This makes a lot of money. So whether you like it or not, we're going to be making a sequel. And he said, okay, fine. And then said, but this needs to be a spinoff entirely unrelated to the Phoenix Wright storyline. And we'll see how well that worked out here in just a minute. So we have the three games here. We have not the museum. We have Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, which is the first game. Well, hello there. Welcome. And then we have Ace Attorney Dual Destinies and Ace Attorney The Spirit of Justice. And note how these say Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney rather than Apollo Justice. So there's a little hint on how well the whole not being connected to Phoenix Wright worked out. But... The first game is Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, which is the first proper Ace Attorney game that was fully made for the DS, the Nintendo DS. So some of the stuff that if you were following along in case five of the first part of the Phoenix Wright trilogy, some of the stuff about examining evidence, doing fingerprinting and stuff that was DS exclusive, we're going to see a lot more of that. And then um, the later two titles were properly adapted with 3D. So for those of you who are OGs and saw my playthrough of Phoenix, or of, uh, sorry, <laughs> the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, they're going to be a lot more similar to that. But anyway, let's get started with Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, and we will begin the next set of the trilogy. So, we're starting right now, episode one, Turnabout Trump. Showdown time. You lose. Ah! Hey! seem to be in a bit of trouble. Something like that. Dead. Someone hit him hard. Me? Please. The cop should be here any minute. I'm in your hands, should it come to that. Oh, we're in court. April 20th, 420. 9.37 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. Panicked. Palm sweaty. Uh, Mom's spaghetti. I can admit it. I'm nervous. Ah, good morning. G good morning, sir. You look tense, Justice. Wound up tight. Uh, wound, wound up, sir? No, I, I'm loose. I'm fine. That screeching noise. Is that your voice? I suppose it's to be expected. 
Your first trial, and it's a homicide. I guess justice doesn't start small, eh? Uh, I'm fine! I, I got up at 5 a.m. to do my Chords of Steel voice workout. I'm fine! Ah, uh -huh. that explains it. I did detect a certain rasping quality to your screech. <coughs> I overdid it again. As you know, your client today is a good friend of mine. I wouldn't want to let him down, if you get my drift. Uh, drift gotten, sir! I'm all over that drift! As it happens, I dined with him the night of the murder. We can't let this case fall through. Yes, yes, I'm fine, sir. One more thing. Don't say you're fine quite so much. People might take you the wrong way. Uh, I'll be preparing our case. You might want to introduce yourself to the client. My name is Apollo Justice. If it isn't clear already, I'm a new attorney. And today is my first trial. N not that I'm worried or anything. The defendant has been accused of... Uh, murder. My boss wants me to help him out, uh, of course. A and so do I. I mean, there's no way he did it. Not him, no, no way. Hmm. Whoa! A good, uh, good morning. Morning. It's all up to you today. First trial, nervous. Meeting him. Cardiac arrest. I think I'm supposed to say something. Uh, help? So you're... Fine! Uh, I'm fine! Ah. Mr. Fine, is it? Um, I did remember you having an odd name. Well, we're off to a great start. Um, are you sure you're okay? I mean, with me? Mr. Gavin's a top-notch attorney, and he's your friend, so why... You'll see. Huh? You can do it. Be confident. Um, I... I'm really sorry this happened to you. I mean, I mean, I... It's time, shall we? Yes, sir. Who could this be? Okay. I need to focus. First trial. Here comes justice. April 20th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. The court is now in session. That's right, we're seven years later and the judge is back. And he will be with us through most of these games. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. And Mr. Payne is back as well. Uh, the defense is uh, fine. I mean, ready, Your Honor. Mine's going blank. Don't panic. Uh oh, too late. Uh, your name was, uh, Mr. Justice, and this is your first trial? Uh, yes, yes, Your Honor, but I'm fine. Really? Are you quite sure? Your voice sounds a bit strained. <laughs> uh, um. Mr. Gavin? Yes, Your Honor. I was under the impression that you would be heading up this case. That was my intention, yes. However... The defense attorney must always cede to his client's wishes. And my client specifically requested Mr. Justice. Well, of course he wants justice. But to entrust his case to this greenhorn? Why? Well, I do not exaggerate when I say that you're the best defense attorney in town, Mr. Gavin. Okay, so Gavin's got trial experience. Fine. But does he have cords of steel? Then let's begin. The defendant may enter the courtroom. This is truly an unfortunate turn of events. I'm sorry we had to meet again under these circumstances. It's a long time no see, Mr. Wright. What? Let's put the past behind us, shall we? These days, I'm merely Phoenix Wright, piano player.
Mr. Wright, how could this have happened? I won't speak of it further, then. If the prosecution would be so kind as to explain the charges, uh, Mr. Payne. To think, <laughs> I saw you enter this room a fresh attorney, and now I'll see you leave in chains. Ah, uh, Winston Payne. Subtle as ever, I see. Ahem! The crime occurred at the Borscht Bowl Club, a Russian restaurant. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, took the victim, a customer, and he hit him, wham, on the head, smack, killed him cold. Hmm. A customer at the restaurant, you say? And the defendant? You say he was the pianist for the club, it seems. Phoenix Wright. A pianist? This is the weapon that took the victim's life. A bottle of grape juice. Grape juice is apparently our defendant's drink of choice. The court accepts the deadly bottle as evidence. Deadly bottle added to the court record. Something to note, Justice. All evidence is filed in the court record. Make a practice of checking it frequently. The court record? Right. I've heard of that. Use the E key to look at the evidence so far. I'm confident in your ability to handle this. Right, just use E. Sounds like it's time for some hands-on action. Okay. Oh man, I just hit the E key. I feel amazing. In this moment, I am euphoric because I hit the E key. Attorney's badge. How long did I yearn for one of these? Just putting it on makes me feel ready. Smith's autopsy report. The time of death was around 2 a.m. April 17th. Death caused by single blow to forehead. Okay. Crime photo. Let's take a look. So that's our victim. And then there's the table. Okay. And the bottle that apparently killed him is sitting there. And the deadly bottle. Grape juice bottle used as the murder weapon bears the defendant, Mr. Wright's prince. Juice bottle applied directly to forehead. You know, that what that hmm. It's not quite the thinker, is it? Let's see. Christoph Gavin, age 32. Boss at Gavin Law Offices. A first-rate defense attorney and my trusted mentor. Phoenix Wright, age 33. Pianist at the Borscht Bowl Club. Formerly an ace defense attorney of some renown. Shady Smith, the victim in this case. A traveler, only recently back in the country. Winston Payne, age 61. The prosecuting attorney. For all his experience, he lacks a certain presence. All right. So the victim was a customer at this restaurant. But just who was this uh, uh, Shady Smith fellow? We believe he was a traveler, Your Honor. A, a traveler? According to his passport, he had been out of the country for a number of years. He had only returned to this country recently, though his place of residence is unclear. And he had some sort of connection with the defendant? That, too, is unclear at present, Your Honor. We believe they first met at the Borscht Bowl Club on the night of the crime. If they'd only just met, then why murder? Perhaps the victim slighted the defendant's piano playing. That doesn't appear to have been the case. No. The motive had nothing to do with the defendant's lack of playing skill. At least not piano playing. I'll let this photo explain what I mean. As we can see, a game of poker was in progress at the scene of the crime. Wait a second! Isn't poker gambling? That's a crime in and of itself! Indeed, it appears our defendant has fallen to become the basest sort of criminal. It is true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim, yet it was only that, a game, in the purest sense. A competition, Your Honor. A competition? Yes, a test of wits, a silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs, wreathed in blue flame, know its final outcome. Uh, come again? The cards on the table had blue backs, Your Honor. I believe the defense was waxing poetic in an attempt to mystify those present and impress women. That will be our first order of business here, then. Impressing women, that is. Uh, to find out more about this fatal game of cards. <laughs> Very well, defendant. You will testify to the court 
about the poker competition held the night of the crime. My pleasure. This is it. My first trial. Here goes nothing. Witness testimony. The competition. I am a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. The room where we play and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. That's all it is, the game. And our customers are happy. Hmm. The pianist who can't play a piano. Better than a defense attorney who can't defend. Uh, very well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Right, Your Honor. My first cross-examination. Don't blow it. Are you alright? You're sweating bullets. Uh, bullets? Where? It's a figure of speech, Justice. Your voice sounds strained and raspy, too. My brain feels strained and raspy, sir. You've watched me perform cross-examinations many times, though you've never done one yourself, have you? You care for a refresher? What to do? Should I ask Mr. Gavin for a refresher? No. We, uh, excuse me, we are Ace Attorneys and none of ourselves. And no need for help here, sir. I think I got this one covered. I think you'd better do more than think. You know it or you do not. Is that a Yoda quote? I'm fine! The cords of steel are ready for battle. My weapons, press and present. Find any inconsistencies, any lies in the testimony, and reveal them to the court. That is cross-examination. Learn it, know it, do it! Inconsistencies. Lies. Phoenix Wright? As if. Phoenix Wright would never lie. And it's up to me to prove it. <laughs> yeah, he'd never lie. He'd never bluff. He'd never uh, BS people. No, never. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Alright, pianist by trade, let's go. You can hardly play? Oh, I play sometimes, when customers demand it. So, I play them one song. That's usually all they want. Was that supposed to be a boast just now? The title of pianist is a mask. A respectable face I wear for the world at large. Then why are you really at the Borscht Boat Club? The old job to take on interested customers, yep. They pay you just to play poker? That would seem to be the case. I am a professional, after all. Ah! Do I detect pride in that statement? It's just hard for an honest, hard-working member of society like me to imagine. Yes. Your imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. W what? I've played poker for seven years in that little room. And I've never lost once. What? You see why the customers come now? Defeat the undefeated poker champion. That's quite a draw. That is, I am quite a draw. Wait, you've never lost once? Not even one time? As I said, I'm a professional. He's played poker for seven years and not lost once? Is that even possible? When they play in there are the club's main attractions. I mean, I actually really liked that detail when I first played this, that Phoenix became a poker player if he couldn't be a lawyer. <laughs> Fits. The room in the crime scene photo is an attraction? And it has quite a history, actually. Borscht Bowl Club used to be a gathering spot for black market types back in the day. B -b black market? No, in the past. Things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays. Suffice it to say that there were a lot of deals being made under the table. Right there in that room. The smoky room! Gambling hoods! You know? Just looking at this picture, it makes me feel bad. <laughs> the bosses gather around the table, cutting deals safe from the dyes of the law. Meanwhile, a goon keeps watch through the small window. I can practically picture it now. That window does look like it would be a good spot for keeping a lookout, but... The room had a few other tricks to it, though it was common knowledge to our regulars. At any rate, they come to play poker in a room steeped in history. 
Despite the dark past, it was all just good, clean fun. Real to simple, we play a game of poker using two decks of cards. Okay. Two decks of cards? A simple measure to prevent cheating. If you alternate two decks, no one can slip in cards. There's something else I noticed. In addition to the cards on the table, there are some lying scattered on the floor. Precisely. Cards on the table, cards upon the floor, each one forming a complete deck. The crime scene painted blue by a sad sweep of cards. It's poetic, really. And perhaps they were playing 52 card pickup. Incidentally, we use two types of cards at the club. One deck of cards. The judge noticed something. What's the catch here? Yes. <laughs> yeah, right? One card, deck of cards was red, the other blue. Hmm. As I recall, in poker, you make five card hands. I can see how it would be easy to cheat. <laughs> yes. A game of hands. Hmm? This competition you're talking about. I believe the court understands the nature of the game sufficiently. Th that's right. It was a simple game, after all. Are you sure? Huh? People are not murdered over simple games, Mr. Justice. Defendant, you were in the room the very moment that the crime occurred. Yet you claim no connection to the crime. Now that's strange. What strange? I was testifying about the competition that night. Asking me about the crime at this point is against the rules, Your Honor. Uh, of course, I expected to hear a cry of objection from the defense. <laughs> oh, I completely let that one slip by. Don't despair yet, Justice. Sir? Right, there's something I'd like made clear, namely your connection to the case at hand. And I'd like to hear it from you. Sure, why not? Uh, very well, the defendant will amend his testimony. Just one little press, and I've got myself a whole new testimony. Yeah, that's how it works. I plead silence regarding the murder, but I will say I never touched the murder weapon. But well, we know that's a lie, but hang on. Silence! The defendant has the right to refuse to testify. I haven't forgotten everything about the law. But why? That clearly puts you at a disadvantage. And it's your job to turn that around in our favor, yeah? <laughs> Great, like I didn't have enough to do already. Justice, didn't you detect anything odd about that testimony? Huh? Wait, something he said did ring a little strangely. Just one thing. Now what was it? When you figure it out, I'd suggest presenting evidence. Evidence that contradicts the testimony. A contradiction in Mr. Wright's testimony, but why? I'd better check the court record, but we know. I can't imagine Mr. Wright lying in a testimony. Isn't it a little early to be jumping to conclusions? This is your first cross-examination. Take it slow. If you need more information, don't forget to press. Right, I got it. I'm fine. Time to listen to that testimony again. All right. Yeah, I think we got it. And present... Deadly Bottle. Wait. Oh yeah, we can actually look at it too if we want to. Because that's a, a feature returning from uh, Case 5 of the first game. Grape Juice. How long has it been since I drank grape juice? Apparently it's Mr. Wright's favorite drink. I wonder how well it goes with borscht. That'd be a really good question. There we go. So, you say you didn't touch the murder weapon. This grape juice bottle? Right? So I said. Uh, something the matter, Mr. Justice? <laughs> Too bad our new defense attorney never learned how to play dumb. Uh, what's this, Mr. Payne? I examined the bottle in question, you see. And it was covered with the defendant's fingerprints! Objection! No need to shout, Mr. Justice. I can hear you just fine. <laughs> Excessive yelling can damage the judge's ears and our case. But, but what about my cords of steel? 
Uh, any, anyway, what's so strange about fingerprints on a bottle in a restaurant? Well, that's true. The prints don't exactly... Oh, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. Huh? But the fingerprints on the murder weapon were upside down. Upside down? What does that mean? It means he was holding the bottle inverted. And there can be only one reason for that. Yes. To brain someone with the bottle. Oh! M Mr. Gavin, I think things just took a turn for the worse. Oh? I see no problem, Justice. Huh? The only thing that matters is the truth. There's a good reason for everything. You'll see. Defendant! Can you explain your fingerprints on this bottle to the court? I stand by my plea of silence regarding the murder. For now. Hmm. Not very cooperative, are you? This could hurt your case. I'm sure he's uncooperative because he's hiding something. There must be some reason. Your Honor, you seem to have forgotten something. And what might that be, Mr. Gavin? On the night of the crime, who was it who reported the murder to the police? Who reported? Well, that was the defendant, Mr. Wright. But still, that... Really? Uh, yes. Well, according to the case file, the murder was reported from near the scene by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Near the scene? Let's take a look at a diagram of the murder scene, shall we? The victim was murdered in a small room in a basement, two floors down from ground level. Of course, cell phones can't get reception so far down. The defendant used the stairs in this hallway to go above ground. The call came from the first floor of the restaurant. I see. And this is the phone that made the call? Right cell phone added the court record. Okay, used by the defendant to notify the police from the restaurant's first floor. Cool. The defendant could have just fled the scene of the crime if he so choose. Yet he fulfilled his duty as a citizen and reported it to the authorities. And you claim he is being uncooperative? Ugh! Nice save, Mr. Gavin. We better not waste this. I think the prosecution has toyed with our client enough for the time being. T toyed? I, I assure you, no one is more serious about- What was it you said? The defendant was in the room the very moment that the crime occurred. How can you possibly know this? That's a good question. How indeed? The answer is simple, Your Honor. The prosecution has a decisive witness. <laughs> You're as good as they say you are. So someone else was in the room the night of the crime. That must mean they witnessed the crime. Everything up till now has been a warm-up, Justice. Are you ready? Uh, very well. The prosecution may call its first witness to the stand. The witness will state her name and profession. Uh, hold on just a moment. Where's the witness? I surmise that she has been frightened by the defense's demonic-looking horns. So I used a little hair gel. Relax, people. Uh, have no fear. If any horns point in your direction, this court will cut them off. You are sure? I swear it on my gavel. Uh, please, come out. Isn't violence against hair a crime, Your Honor? Well, if you are sure it is okay. Ahem, now, the prosecution... Wait a minute! Would the prosecution care to explain the witness's, uh, uh, paraphernalia? Uh, yes. She is a professional, Your Honor. Those are merely the tools of her trade. And that would be... My name is Olga Oli. I am employed as waitress in Borscht Bowl Club Restaurant. Then, why the camera? Of course, it is my pride to serve Bush at this naming restaurant. But I also perform, how it is said, uh, other service. I think it one of those services is taking the customer's pictures. Da, da, like for example, uh, this one. Th that's the defendant. Indeed, on the night of the murder. 
Man in the white hat is one who has gone kaput. Indeed. That is the victim. Order, order. This is quite a piece of evidence to casually drop into our laps. It is the same way as I drop cold bowls of borscht on laps of customers casually. I was hoping the other person would be Maya, but I'm sure she's coming. Yeah. Hmm, <laughs> then the court will casually accept this new evidence. All right, August photo. Now, witness, where were you at the time of the murder? I was in room, the hideout, we call it. Excuse me? The hideout? It is the room where famous gangster Bad Guy was arrested. <laughs> His room where murder took place. What? You look about their surprise. It is lovely. I will post my courtroom door later for you. Da, da. Photos will be numbered, and you will write which ones you want copy of. So... There were three people in the room at the time of the crime. The victim, Shady Smith, Mr. Wright, and Olga Orly, our witness. And if Mr. Wright isn't the killer, that means... Uh, very well, witness. You will testify to the court about that night's events. That fateful night. That night, customer asked me to deal cards for game. It was cold. Both players played with hats on, da. Uh, the victim, he plays whole time with his hand on locket at his neck. Then last hand is done, but something terrible has happened, da. That man flew at victim and is strangling him to death. Hmm. Incidentally, who won the game? Isn't it obvious the winner was the victim, Mr. Smith? That's ridiculous. Um, because... Because Mr. Wright can't lose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Justice. Maybe you can come up with a more legitimate objection. But he hadn't lost in seven years. Take it from me, kid. It happens. I didn't lose my a case my first seven years as prosecutor either. Incidentally, I have some evidence here. These are, are the poker chips as they lay at the very moment of the crime. The hand and the chips on this side belong to the defendant, Mr. Wright. Those on the far side belong to the victim, Mr. Smith. Chips, you say? Da, da, I mean, yes. Imagine that poker is war. Your hand is your army and the chips are the spoils. Uh, I know that. After all, in my youth I was known as... The poker head of courtroom number three. I think he means poker face. Um, looking at this picture, it does seem that most of the chips are on the victim's side of the table. You can't read my poker face. It's a chips photo added to the court record. Okay. Defendant and victim's chips when crime took place. Got it. Very well. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Okay. Uh, hang on a second. A customer asked me to deal cards for game. You were dealing cards? Do you do this often? Duh! I am doing this. If customer wishes it, I serve anything. Borscht cards, more borscht. It is my work. It is good to hear of a place that hasn't forgotten the meaning of service. Welcome you to Borscht Club, where Borscht is as warm as the waitress is. Uh, thank you for not handing out flyers during the cross-examination. It was cold, both players played with hats on. Okay. It's already April. How could it be cold? At the Borscht Bowl Club, we have applied an authentic Russian, Russian restaurant theme. Outside it is city in spring, but inside it is always as cold as Mother Russia. No way am I going there. When it comes to hot borscht, cold is best seasoning, da. The victim, he plays whole time with hand on locket in his neck. His locket? I believe it was good luck charm, da. He gripped it many times as he played that night. Uh, yes, he must have felt as though it might carry him to the moon and the stars. 
Though if it was small enough to fit around his neck, it wouldn't have much lift. Um, the defense would like a clarification. This is a locket we're talking about. I mean, uh, a pendant with a picture in it, right? Not a rocket? Of course, I knew that! It was probably a pendant shaped like a rocket. That's why she called it that. No, a locket's a locket. It doesn't matter what- It's considered bad form to poke fun at the heart of hearing in our society. But <laughs> hearing or part of understanding. So what happened next? Last hand is done, something terrible has happened. We're taking this thing to the moon. Something terrible? <laughs> the defense will refrain from needlessly shouting. Uh, sorry. I need to seriously reconsider this vocal training thing. Now, Miss Orley, can you tell us what happened? Oh, I was so frightened that I trembled with fear. That man flew at victim and is strangling him to death. Wait a minute, he was not strangled to death. But the defendant would never do such a thing! <laughs> well now, I can't say I've ever heard the defense try this tactic. If possible, please refrain from embarrassing me. Still, why would anyone do something like this over a game of poker? But perhaps it is because the defendant has lost the game? Yes, a crushing defeat for a man undefeated. So it always is with men like him. Winners make sore losers. Oh, how the mighty fall. Go ahead. I believe you know what it is you need to do. Uh, right, sir. Leave it to me. There were only three people in the room at the time of the murder. The victim, Shady Smith, Mr. Wright, and... And if Mr. Wright isn't the killer... I've got you now, Orly. All right. Strangle him to death. Okay, present. Single blow to the forehead. Objection! He was not strangled. Oh, really? Strangled, you say? That's odd. And yes, this was made in 2007. And yes, her name is a reference to the oh, really meme. Duh. Normal customers only choke on borscht. No, I mean, this report shows that the victim died of a blow to the head. Ah! Miss Orley, really now, did you witness the crime? E hmm, looking at the picture, it doesn't seem like he was hit. He's still wearing his hat and everything. Yeah, it is a fact that he was hit, Your Honor. Here's a photo we took of the victim with his hat off during our investigation. Well, that's quite shocking, isn't it? His head certainly was hit! Crime photo 2 added to the court record. Hat removed. Got it. But, but I have seen it happen! The defendant, he lunged at victim. He's neck. Oh, really, Miss Orley? I think I've caught you in your own lie this time. Justice. I admire your enthusiasm. But perhaps you should think this through once more. What, what, what do you mean? I, I found a contradiction. There's one thing in her testimony that troubles me. Very well. It seems we should continue the cross-examination. There's such a thing as thinking too much. This horse is dead. Let's stop beating it. There's such a thing as thinking aloud too much, too. Customer asked me to deal cards for game. It was cold. The victim, he plays. When it tried to strangle the victim, he hit him with a bottle. Okay. So we have a revised testimony here. You didn't say anything about hitting before. I'm so, so sorry. I must be forgetting this, da. Witness, you will take greater care with your testimony. Oh, da, da. I am sorry, Your Honor. And that clears up the discrepancy with the autopsy report, I believe. The defendant made to strangle his victim and changed his mind. And chose a simpler, blunter means to do the job. Yes, that sums it up quite nicely. So he strangled him, then hit him? Something's fishy about all this. Go ahead. I believe you know what it is you need to do. Right. Leave it to me. There were only three people in the room at the time of the murder. 
The victim, Shady Smith, Mr. Wright, and yeah, with Mr. Wright's not the killer. Yeah, we got that. So we got Alright, try to hit it hit him with the bottle. Death was caused by a single blow. The sub basement. Is it the photo? Is that the thing? Let's see. No. The witness's statement is clearly faulty, Your Honor. I'm sorry, but I can see nothing faulty. Unfortunately, I will have to penalize you, Mr. Justice. Ooh, I must be on the wrong track. All right, so that's not it. Um, hmm. Let's see. So... Let's look at our evidence again. All right, so we got the photo. Is there anything else weird that's going on? So that's not it, but let's see. Yeah. Got it. All right. Um, they've also, you might notice, taken away the ability to present profiles. I think they found that to be a really awkward mechanic, so they took it away for this one. Something terrible. Wait, the victim, he plays whole time with his hand on locket at his neck. Hang on. He's not wearing a locket in that picture. And, yeah, he's not wearing a locket in this picture either. But he is wearing it in this picture. Interesting. That might be our contradiction. Uh, is it this one? May that one's a closer picture. There we go. You know, there was one curious part in her testimony, just like Mr. Gavin said. But what does it mean? Mr. Justice, would you care to explain what it is you're thinking so intensely about? Uh, recall the testimony, Your Honor. The victim played with his hand on locket at his neck, I believe she said. I hope you aren't about to raise an objection to the witness's grammar. No, but look at this photograph. Do you see a locket on the victim's neck? Well done, Justice. I'm impressed. I knew you'd be able to handle this. But what does it mean? If we are to believe this witness's testimony as is, then the locket disappeared following the victim's death. Lockets don't just disappear, Your Honor. It's quite simple when you think about it. If the locket is gone, someone must have taken it off, no? Taken it off? Wait, you don't mean... The defendant wasn't strangling the victim at all. He was taking off his locket. Wouldn't that explain it? Ah! <laughs> D -d defendant, what do you have to say to this? Say? Yes. I just noticed this, but... You have something hanging around your neck, don't you? Oh, y you mean this? Yes, it's a locket. With a photograph inside. A photo of my daughter. Come again? Mr. Wright, you have a daughter? We confirmed it at the time of arrest. The picture in the locket is indeed Mr. Wright's daughter. So Mr. Wright has a locket too? Why don't I buy that this is just a coincidence? Hmm. Phoenix has a daughter? What? Well, now, if the results of this poker game led to the murder, perhaps we should hear a bit more about the outcome of the game. Further testimony won't really be necessary. It's clear the defendant lost badly. Miss Orley, you will testify to the court about the game played between the victim and defendant. D duh. All right. 
the game began with 3,500 points in chips for each man. Uh, house chips come in two size, small and large. The one who was winning, died. it was victim. For last hand, defendant play with all chips on table and lose. The moment loss was decided. Defendant grabs bottle from table and... Indeed, looking at this picture, it does seem to be a one-sided game. As the court knows, poker was the defendant's life. Failure must have been a bitter pill to swallow. Ah, how many times have I heard these words? I done it in a fit of anger, your honor, and now I regret what I done. Uh, a common tale, but true. And he thinks the judge watches too many old court movies. And Mr. Wright said he hasn't lost in seven years, so this testimony must be wrong. Serious competition. Okay, 3,500 points and chips for each man. Got it. Are those the usual starting points? Were any special rules used? No, not special. Usual game. Usual rules. If each man began with 3,500 points, then the total would be... Um... Exactly six... No, 7,000 points! Please, this isn't calculus. It's not even long division. House chips come in two size, small and large. All right. Are the chips in this photo all the chips that were used? Duh, duh, of course. Hmm? Something's fishy with those chips. Should I press harder? Fish and chips, is Inspector Gregson around? Press harder. Uh, maybe you could explain a bit about these chips. Uh, explain? What is that to be explained? But... Poker chips are poker chips. They're not fish and chips. Not a chip off the old block. Not a motorcycle cop. Not a. Thanks. Now that I've pressed her, I better ask something. What are these chips worth? Are they in dollars or <laughs> rubles even? Yet, as I have been saying before, it was game, not gambling. But perhaps for capitalists to understand. Two types of chip 100 points chip and 1000 point chip. It is not money, da? Justice. Sir? Don't you find her comment interesting? In more ways than one, sir. I'd have it added to her testimony myself. Well, does the defense want the witness to add to her testimony? Yes. Yes. I do think this deserves further scrutiny. Added to the testimony. Wish I knew where I was going with this. Uh, very well, witness, if you would be so kind. Da, da, your honor. One kind of chip is worth a hundred other kind, of two and all. Okay, hang on a second. Let's add this up then. So there should be 7,000 points, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's 10,000 points right there. If they're a thousand. One kind is worth a hundred, the other is worth a thousand. Yeah, this doesn't add up. We're gonna present. You sure it was the victim who won? Absolutely sure? It seems our new attorney is a bit confused. A glance at the picture is enough to tell you who won, if you're not in kindergarten. Um, just for safety's sake, could, could you explain the problem to the court? Of course, Your Honor. In this photo, I see small chips and I see large chips. Tell me, which were worth a thousand points? Why, the big ones, of course. Duh! Oh, I thought so, too. But then the totals don't add up. The, the, the totals? Well, let's review what the witness told us. Each man started with 3,500 points in chips. And the combined total value of the chips was 7,000 points. Uh, yes, if my calculations are correct. Uh, let's see, three plus one, uh, carry the five. Uh, um, they are, Your Honor. Now, look at this photo that allegedly shows all the chips. If the big chips are worth a thousand points, and the small chips are worth a hundred, and you add them up, how much is it? Do it yourself. You aren't in kindergarten, are you? Uh, 10,600 points. The chips don't add up. This clearly contradicts the witness's testimony. 
But why? How could this be? Exactly, Justice. Now that you know the what, you must determine the why. Right. There's only one possible way to explain this contradiction. The starting points were wrong. The chip count was wrong. Both were right. Um... Well... Oh, wait. Yeah, it's right, it's just the values are off. Yeah. Each man began the game with 3,500 points. If all the chips are indeed shown in this photograph, then there can be only one answer. Well, what is it? The value of the chips was the other way around. What? Want to know what I think? The small chips were worth a thousand points, not the big ones. Uh, madness! Utter madness! Uh, show me that photograph of the chips again! There are six small chips and ten large chips. Why, that does make seven thousand points when you add them up. Excellent work, Justice. It's almost as though you figured it out by yourself. Well, I'm just glad I was the one who said it. But, but wait! The value of the chips may be different, but that changes nothing! Indeed, the victim did have the larger number of chips still. Ah! Exactly. If the small chips are a thousand points and the large chips are a hundred, let's do a little math. Add up the points for each side of the table. Ah! Uh, uh, oh! The victim, Mr. Smith, had 2,900 points and the... Uh, 4,100 points! Well now, it seems that Mr. Wright was winning that night after all. That's I impossible! My client had even less reason to kill the victim. After all, he was winning! Yeah! Now, Miss Orley, you must have known the true value of the chips. Since you were there at the scene of the crime, weren't you? Order! Order! It appears our defendant has lost his motive! And Mr. Wright's supposed defeat will never happen! We must now ask ourselves whether we can trust the t Excuse me, what is it, Miss Orley? I, I did not want to be saying this, but actually, you see, um... You see what, Miss Orley? What did we see? In the last hand, there was cheat. A, a, a cheat? You don't mean a trick? Wait, are you, do you mean a scam? They're all the same thing. Yes, there was cheat in the last hand. That is why game ends with chips as they are. Great, just great. First we have lying and now cheating. Well, this case certainly has taken a turn. Pretty interesting. Witness, you will please testify to the court. Tell us about this cheating in the final hand. Witness testimony. The last hand, both men had full house. There is four of each card in deck from ace to king. If you look at both men's hands, cheat is more obvious. The next moment, game becomes argument. Da! The defendant's trick was exposed. He took bottle in his hand. Poor Mr. Smith. Miss Orley? Why did you not tell the court about this from the very beginning? I thought I smelled a cover up here. Well, folks, it's time to throw back the covers. Hmm, a full house is a very high-scoring hand. Not easy to make, in my experience. That alone is enough to suspect less than scrupulous tactics. Um, Mr. Gavin? What's a full house? Lawyers these days, you don't know your poker. I can't say this bodes well for your case or career. What is this, some kind of secret court poker ring? Justice. You know the terms one pair, two pair, and three of a kind, yes? Uh, yeah, no problem. Two cards with the same number makes a pair, and three makes a one of a kind. Good. Now picture a hand with one pair and one three of a kind. That's a full house. 
Hmm, that doesn't sound very easy to make, does it? You can see each player's hand in this photo. Wow, they both have full houses. We forget, there's an easy way to make a full house and go undefeated for seven years. You cheat. Uh -huh. The defense may cross-examine the witness. He did cheat in the last hand. That still leaves one important question. Mr. Wright lost that hand. Who's ever heard of a professional con man losing when they cheat? Right, the final hand. And both men had full house, okay? Just how hard is it to make a full house anyway? It is quite hard. Uh, it is making a pair in a three of kind at the same time. I guess that's right. Very difficult to be sure. You can take my word as the poker head of courtroom number three. Very difficult, uh, but is not impossible. Okay, full house hard. This line of questioning, a waste of time. There's four of each card in deck from Ace to King. Okay. Four of each card, you say? Da! There is one spade, one diamond, one heart, and one club for each card. It is interesting fact that this number four comes from number of seasons. Huh? You don't say. Ah, and did you know that the cards are numbered one to thirteen? Then all the cards in a deck, you, you get 364. A year! Huh. You don't say. Wait, isn't that one day short? And that's why each deck has two jokers. They say the second joker stands for the leap year. Thus you have a perfect representation of the year. All in a deck of cards. Huh. You don't say. We're gonna be in this courtroom for a year if it keeps going like this. You look at both men's hands, the cheat is more obvious. How was it clear? Uh, well, the defendant, he played a fifth ace. A fifth ace? I still remember both hands very well. Mr. Smith's hand has three aces. And Mr. Wright's, two. Obviously, cheating was afoot. Or perhaps I should say, a hand. Your Honor, perhaps this can be added to the testimony without Mr. Payne's joke. Very well. The witness will add this detail to her testimony, please. Mr. Smith's hand has three aces and Mr. Wright's two. It has five aces in all. Okay, hang on a second. Okay. Wait. I don't... Wait, I don't see that. I see four aces. Three aces... No. It appears the witness is mistaken. Mistaken? But my name... Look, this piece of evidence clearly contradicts what you said in your testimony. That's the photo of the chips, is it not? Justice. Perhaps you want to explain your point in a way that the judge can comprehend. In other words, use your finger to point out your point. Uh, yes, please point out the contradiction in this photo. What particular point contradicts the witness's testimony? Well, um... It's the, uh, the fact that, you know... Phoenix over here has two. And I think the problem is that there is two there, too. So, over here. Miss Orley, in your testimony, you made the following claim. Mr. Smith's hand has three aces. But as you can clearly see, the victim's hand only held two aces. <laughs> uh, well, well, maybe the witness was simply confused. Perhaps it was the defendant's hand that held the third ace in question. Take another look at the evidence. As you can see, the defendant also had two aces in his hand. Where's this fifth ace? I see cheating, all right. And it's going on right here in this courtroom. Uh, two aces in each player's hand does make four aces total. Hardly proof of cheating. Wait, please. It is true. I have seen it. The fifth ace. 
They was cheating, I swear to you. That's odd. She must be lying, yet she's the most sincere I've ever seen. You're right to trust your instincts. Mr. Gavin? Who knows what lies in store for us in the trial ahead? Your Honor, if I may, I have a suggestion. What might that be, Mr. Gavin? If you don't mind, perhaps we might examine the actual cards. The cards? Mr. Payne. Yes? The player's hands that night set aside as evidence, were they not? The defense would likely request that the cards be shown to the court. Uh, very well, the uh, prosecution will submit this evidence. Which will you examine? The victim's cards or the defendant's cards? If these cards don't prove cheating was going on, nothing will. Now, which of these hands is more suspicious? The uh, victim's hand. It was the victim's hands that changed over the course of the witness's testimony. The defense requests time to examine Mr. Smith's cards. Uh, very well, Mr. Payne, if you would. Very well. Victim Smith's hand. Got it. Well, time's a-wasting. Get to it, Justice. Yes, sir. All right. When examining evidence, be sure to view it from all sides and angles. Try using the arrow keys to turn it every which way, and the B and M to zoom in and out. And be sure to BM whenever you can to your opponents. Have you ever played League of Legends, Mr. Justice? No. That should give you a better perspective on the case. Okay, let's do this. Aha! We got a problem. W what? Your Honor, look at this! One of the victim's cards. The back is a different color! How did you not notice that? <laughs> okay. Th that's impossible! But I put that color in right hand. Uh, I what was that, Miss Orley? No, yet. I merely said that. Uh, I have. E Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Gavin? Yes? Tell me, what is the easiest way to cheat at poker? Uh, to cheat? I'll tell you. One merely needs a friend, a comrade, shall we say. The dealer. Uh, uh, ah! Wait, so you mean. This witness, Miss Orley? She's the cheater. A professional light wager. Yeah! Order! Order! Focus, Justice. Time to take advantage of her. I mean, of her mistake. Your Honor, please recall the testimony we just heard. That's impossible. But I put that card in right's hand. Ergo, Miss Olga Orley conspired to cheat, not with my client, but with the victim, Mr. Shady Smith! Oh! Not only did she cheat, she cheated poorly! Therefore, it's not hard to imagine an altercation between her and the victim. What?! Wait, you don't mean the defense isn't accusing the witness, Miss Olga Orley, are you? Time for justice. There were three people in the room at the time of the incident, and if Mr. Wright isn't guilty, that means... I am! The defense accuses the witness, Miss Olga Orley, of murder! <laughs> Mr. Payne? Where is your witness, Miss Olga Orley? Um... It appears she has lost, uh, consciousness, Your yeah, Honor. Hmm, Mr. Justice? Your Honor? It seems you've presented a new possibility to the court, one suggesting a connection between the witness and the victim, Mr. Smith. And that means this court cannot pronounce a verdict for the defendant at this time. <laughs> what? I did it. I held out. I see no point in prolonging the trial this day. The prosecution will need to make further inquiries. M M Mr. Wright? You can't end the trial here, Your Honor. Not yet. What nonsense is the defense spewing now? Think. 
One of the cards had a different colored bag. Don't you wonder what it means? Uh, wh what are you doing, Mr. Wright? Raising objections right when you're about to get off the hook? Ridiculous! Mr. Payne, you of all people should know, Mr. Wright has a talent for the ridiculous! Not, not wrong. Perhaps we should get to the bottom of things. Let's clear up the facts about the game that fateful night. As was said before, we alternated between two decks of cards that night. That was said before. The two decks at the club. Phoenix continues to be the worst client. It's true, right? <laughs> The two decks at the club have different colored backs. Blue and red. One color per deck. Why well, use different colored backs? If we use the same color, the two decks might get mixed. Um, you use different colors and they still got mixed up. We used the red deck for the last game. Hmm, I see, but that's odd. For some reason, I have this impression that you were using the blue cards. Yeah, me too. I'm sure someone said something about blue cards. Whatever. In the end, one card of the wrong color got into the mix. Which means there was cheating. Yes. A card slipped into the deck, which seemed to indicate cheating, yet... This card raises two serious questions. Apollo? Uh, y yes Let's consider the first question, shall we? Think. In the last game, when was the card swapped? When? There are three broad possibilities here. It could have been swapped before the murder, during the murder, or after the murder. Well, yeah, thanks for the news bulletin, Mr. Wright. Uh, of course it was sw- Oh. It might be as simple as you think, Mr. Payne. Or it might not be. <laughs> I'd like to hear what Apollo thinks first. Uh, when do you think the cards were swapped? When was the card swapped into the deck? Before the murder, during the murder, after the murder? Um... Well, according to what she let slip, it had to have been before the murder, right? Well, it must have happened before the murder. You mean during the game? I wonder... Huh? Why? Think. When you're playing poker, which side of the cards face your opponent? Oh! The, the back! Not something the poker head of courtroom number three would be likely to miss. Sorry, let me think about this some more. Okay, so it wasn't. Um, so had it been after the murder, because during the murder would be ridiculous. Perhaps it happened after the murder. Oh, what's that? Ridiculous! What's the point of cheating after the hands have been shown? That's silly! Yes, but tell me. How do you swap cards during the game? I'll take silly over impossible. Take it from me, son. There's a lot of silly in this world, but very little impossible. Oh, even when the backs of the cards are a different color? If you pulled that card during the game, you'd be caught in no time. Ah! Quite true. That would mean that the blue card in question was swapped after the hands were shown, after the murder. Uh, okay, this is going past silly and straight on to crazy. I ask again, what's the point of cheating after the game's over? Who would do that? Who oh, indeed. That's one of the mysteries before us. Th there's another? Yes, a simple yet decisive question must be asked. Who swapped the red card for a blue card? Wh who? The game and murder is done. The victim is dead. Only two remain in the room, alive, that is. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, and our witness, Olga Orley. Okay, so who was it that swapped the red card for a blue? Um, Olga, right? Wait, it has to, must have been Olga Orley who swapped the cards. She was trying to cover up evidence of the cheating. That does make some sense. Sorry, but there's a problem with that explanation. Huh? The swamp card was from the wrong deck. Y yes, a uh, blue card was stuck into a red hand. Mixing a card from the wrong deck when the backs are different colors? Remember that you're talking about Olga Orly. She was the dealer. Do you really think she would make such a novice mistake? 
Actually, I have trouble imagining even the judge making that mistake. Give it a little more thought, Apollo. Uh, right. Okay, so who was it that swapped the red card for a blue? Somebody else. The one who swapped the cards wasn't Mr. Wright, of course. And, well, it doesn't seem like it could have been Olga Orly, either. Wh what are you suggesting? That's hardly a logical conclusion, I'll admit. As the defense, I think it only makes sense for you to name Miss Orly at this point. Yes, yes, I know. But, but she was the one who dealt the cards, right? I, I just can't believe she would make the mistake of swapping the wrong color card. And if the card was swapped during the game, it'd be obvious. <laughs> uh, something you'd like to share with the court, Mr. Wright? Oh, <laughs> my apologies, Your Honor. I was just thinking about how much fun all this is. Fun? How about confusing? I've no idea what the defense is claiming, Your Honor. If the one who swapped the card wasn't the defendant, and it wasn't Miss Orley, then who was it? Uh, yeah, well, that is the question, isn't it? Precisely. Huh? I believe we're about to see this case take a new direction. A new direction? We'll find that, indeed, after the murder, someone swapped one of the cards in the victim's hand. That someone made two critical mistakes. I'm sure you're going to tell us that the first was swapping the wrong color card. Because the one who did the swap didn't know two colors of cards were being used. The other mistake was the number on the card. Right. The person replaced the fifth ace with a king. I'm sure whoever swapped it wasn't expecting there to be a fifth ace after all. All they knew was that the game had been won with a full house. So they picked up a king from the table and swapped it in. But, but there's one problem. According to our case record, this person doesn't exist. True, not until now. But you have to admit the possibility of a fourth person. Though it's more than a possibility. There was someone else there the night at the scene of the crime. W what? It had to have been Godot since he can't see red. Oh! <laughs> I believe the judge spoke truthfully earlier. You do make trials ridiculous, Mr. Wright. This trial is preceded on one central assumption. Namely, that at the time of the incident, there were only three people in that room. I believe this new evidence, shall we say, overturns that assumption. The problem is that you chose to conceal this information from the court. Mm, I suppose that's a problem, yes. Court is adjourned for a brief recess. Uh, Mr. Gavin, I'll see you in my chambers during this recess. Certainly, Your Honor. Uh, very well. The trial will resume in 20 minutes. April 20th, 11.52 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. That was quite unexpected, Mr. Wright, to suddenly claim there was another person at the scene of the crime like that. I must ask, is it the truth? Well, now, I think you would know the answer to that. <laughs> being mysterious, are we? Sadly, I have no time for mysteries. I'd only ask that you leave the defending to your defense in the future. Otherwise, I cannot guarantee the outcome. I see you haven't mellowed out one bit, Kristoff. Justice. Yes, sir? The judge has summoned me to his chamber, so carry on without me. You did well, Apollo. Um, can I ask you something? Sure. That locket you wear, is that really yours, Mr. Wright? Ah, you're wondering about the victim's disappearing locket. Here, you can take a look at it. It's a picture of my daughter in there. I'm just surprised to hear you had a daughter. Most people are. Perhaps you'll meet her one of these days. One more question. The one who cheated that night, was it you? What do you think? Huh? You know what happened seven years ago. What I did. It's not unreasonable for you to think I might cheat. But uh, I never... Honest, but... It is odd that he managed to go undefeated for seven whole years. Want to know something? There's only one game where you can be dealt bad cards all night and still win. 
poker. Huh? You see, poker is all about reading your opponent. In that way, it's a lot like a court case. Poker is like trial law. Figure out what your opponent's thinking when you win. Well, yeah, but that's harder than it sounds. I think not. Huh? Try as they might to conceal it, everyone reveals their true thoughts in the end. Their body language can become a valuable source of information. You're kidding! That witness, for instance, Miss Orly. She would touch the back of her neck during certain parts of her testimony. Did you notice? Uh, no. Come on, who'd notice that? Words, habits, twitches. It's all information for the reading. And that's the secret to winning, Apollo. Someone taught me, and now I pass the secret on to you. B but I'm not worthy. I mean, there's no way I'll pick up on these signals. No. You can do it. Huh? You just don't know it yet. What's he talking about? But you will. Soon. Ah, almost forgot. One more thing. Uh, about this case. You should know. I haven't told the truth to anyone yet. What? I knew it. I have my reasons, of course. All shall be revealed. And Apollo, I need you to be there defending me. I need your power. My, um, power? I had no idea my cords of steel were that special. It's time. The real trial begins now. Do your best. Oh boy. Let's save. Yeah. Continue to the next chapter. Heck yeah. April 20th, 1214 p.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Court will now reconvene. Has our witness, Miss Olga Orley, recovered? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, well, she's regained consciousness. Perhaps we can hear her version of the events again. That's the thing. You see, she's quite fatigued. You're looking a bit fatigued yourself, Mr. Payne. Sadly, fatigue is insufficient grounds for refusing to testify. Or prosecute. The defense would like to request that Miss Orley take the stand. Very well. The witness will take the stand. Perhaps you could repeat your name and profession. Or perhaps you'd rather admit that you're a poor liar and a poorer loser. N n n n not. Name's Olga Orly. That's the truth. I'm a pro dealer. People call me Olga Quick Fingers Orly. Oh! Oh, really? Wanna know something else? I'm not really Russian. And my last name sounds like Oh, really? There, that's the truth. I hope you're satisfied. Witness, you will tell the court what you really were up to that night. Fine, I'll talk. We had a plan, see? Uh, let me remind you that you are currently under oath. Any further fabrications will have serious consequences. Fine. Like I said, I'm a pro. That guy Smith hired me to do what I do best. I was planted at the Borscht Bowl Club several days prior to the night of the game. As a waitress. So you were in cahoots with the victim? Not that he needed my help. Smith's a well-known poker player in some circles. But winning wasn't the main purpose of this game. It was about destroying a legend, the unbeatable Phoenix Wright. The plan was simple. Elegant, really. You see, we set up a trap of sorts. It was to plant a card in Wright's pocket beforehand, and then deal five aces during one of their games. When their hands were revealed, Smith would call him out and search Wright. He would then pull out the planted card, and the trap would snap shut. You swapped the cards! Exposed as a cheater and losing on top of it. He would have made a great double play. Just like that, the legend would be dashed to pieces. Indeed. Uh, getting caught red-handed at cheating would cast doubt on all his prior wins. A seven-year legend destroyed by one little card. That was the plan. 
Oh, really, Orly? How droll. But it appears you made quite the mistake. Uh, mistake? I agree, the trap was elegant. Yet, what happened to that planted card? Hey, that's right! He's lucky, I'll give him that. You'd have to be s to slip free from a trap laid by Olga Quick Fingers Orly. Oh, really? The witness would be much cuter if she dispensed with the evil mastermind shtick. Cute? Who wants to be cute? I'm not cute. I'm bad. You hear me? Bad. Now, when you're through being bad, perhaps you could testify to the court. Uh, tell us about this trap and how it was sprung. <laughs> All right. Witness testimony. That night I did the card like I was supposed to, and Wright lost the last hand, just like he was supposed to. Then Smith searched it, but the planted card was gone. The trap failed. The next moment, Wright picked up a bottle and swung it. It wasn't me who hit Smith. It was that no-good cheating defendant. Well, he wasn't a cheating defendant, was he? Hmm, a surprisingly frank testimony that still leaves us mostly in the dark. The trap was perfect, I tell you. Perfect! If that rotten cheetah hadn't messed it up. Look who's talking. Well, the testimony, for what it's worth, is all yours, Mr. Justice. With witnesses like her, who needs criminals? And with the defendants like Mr. Wright, who needs prosecutors? Alright, cross-examination time. Best laid traps. That night, planted the card. This planted card. Which card was it exactly? The Trump card. The Five of Hearts. Uh, let me guess. Mr. Wright was to have switched the five with the ace to make a full house. Uh, at least that's what you were going to accuse him of doing, thereby ruining his legend. I slid it into Wright's pocket. When was this? Why, before the match, of course, while he was eating. At the Borscht Bowl Club, we served Borscht and Suckers. You remind me never to go there. Of course, the card was to make his grand debut during the game. Like a good Borscht, the good plot must be cooked up early, then allowed to thicken. Hmm. Wright lost the last hand, and Smith searched him, okay? So, everything went according to plan. Exactly. The fifth ace came up, so it's obvious the switch went off without a hitch. Once the extra card was found in his pocket, Wright would be forever known as a cheat and a fraud. Those are worse, there are worse things we don't as, I suppose. Uh, tell us what happened with the search. Planet card was gone and the trap failed, right. The card disappeared? Yeah, my trump card, the five of hearts. Gone, without a trace, poof, zippo. We searched every nook and cranny, even inside his cute little hat. But the card was nowhere to be found, is this correct? Never in my long, storied career, never has Quick Fingers Orly been so readily duped. Oh, really? So, what did happen to that Five of Hearts? Don't look at me. Why don't you ask that cheat and lie on Two-Faced Defendant? So the Five of Hearts is still missing in action. I picked up a bottle and swung it. Wait, isn't that a little odd? W what's odd? You searched Mr. Wright uh, thoroughly and found nothing, which means he didn't cheat, which means he had no reason to strike the victim. No, well... Oh. What was that just now? I... I sense something. Is something wrong, Mr. Justice? Uh, no, nothing, Your Honor. What to do? Should I press her a little harder? Yeah. Miss Orly, you're hiding something. W what are you talking about? You... you m me? Quick fingers, Orly? Hi hide something? The defense will refrain from baseless accusations. I have one question for the witness, then. You say you saw the moment the defendant hit the victim. Is this true? Uh, of course it's true. I, I did see it, honest. I saw it when Mr. Wright hit him. With my own eyes, I saw it. What's this weird vibe I'm getting? Phoenix slipped a Magatama into Apollo's pocket. <laughs> that witness, for instance, Miss Orly, she would touch the back of her neck during certain parts of her testimony. Did you notice? Touching her neck, was it?
Whoa, what's going on? The sensation. It's coming into focus. There, that twitch. It's so clear. It's like I could perceive her habit like I couldn't before. Perceive. Miss Orly, perhaps you are unaware of this yourself. Uh, unaware of what? Whenever you get to a certain part of your testimony, you touch the back of your neck with your left hand. Uh, my... my neck? S so what? What indeed, Justice. I hadn't noticed anything of the sort. When she says that part of the testimony, she's subconsciously recalling something. Her body reacts to the memory, and she touches her neck. I'm sure of it. Uh, a memory? Would someone care to explain what he's babbling about? This is highly unusual, but let's ask the defense. You claim the witness is remembering something. Maybe you have evidence of this memory to show us? Her habit is scratching her neck whenever she talks about the moment of the crime. So what would remind her most of the moment of the crime? Miss Orly, whenever you recall that crime, you scratch your neck. I've noticed it happens when you think about the moment of the crime. There must be some reason behind this habit of yours. I believe the weapon that left an erasable impression on your neck is this. The... bottle? Wait, let's... can we look at the top? The bottle is completely empty. Okay. It's... Whenever she talks about the moment of the crime, she touches her neck. And what reminds us more of that moment than this bottle? The murder weapon. Ugh. But something doesn't fit. If you were only the witness to the crime, why would that make you touch your neck like you're in pain? What's he talking about now? It was Mr. Smith, the victim who was hit, not you. Uh, uh, um... This is a cross-examination, not a cross-wild conjecture. The, the witness is habits? They're completely irrelevant. Justice? I'll admit, I'm a bit confused myself. This is certainly a unique cross-examination. I'll explain it later. Just trust me. Now is the only chance to break her. Miss Orly, please testify in detail about the moment of the crime. The very moment. And yet, you know, knowing nothing. Um, we know you're not Russian. The witness will testify, please. Now. Bah, fine. He's the one who did it. I didn't let slip of it out of my sight until the cops got there. Different personality, but the same testimony. I believe you have her where you want her, Justice. The circumstances have changed, yet her testimony has not. That means... There's got to be a contradiction in there. Quiet. I planted the card, right? He's the one who did it. I didn't let him out of my sight until the cops got there. You seem uneasy. You try standing up here. Her eyes are darting all over the place. I must be getting warm. Tell me, after the crime, what was the defendant like? Uh, well, he must have been stunned by the weight of his crime. He sat in the days at that table until the cops came. Intriguing. I believe you've gotten all the testimony you're going to get out of this witness. So what do you think about her testimony? I'll tell you what I think. Her testimony is... Is it flawed or is it fine? Let's think about that for a minute. Um... So... I mean, she would have had to have gone upstairs with him when he made the phone call, right? And also, yeah, it seems weird she would keep an eye on it. Yeah. I don't think it's fine. I think it's flawed. It's basically bogus. It contradicts the evidence. What's that? Well, show us this evidence, Mr. Justice. This evidence that you claim contradicts the testimony. She didn't let him out of her sight until the cops got there. 
I know there's some evidence that contradicts that. Is it the cell phone? Yeah. Miss Orley, we have a record here that clearly contradicts what you said. It states that the police were alerted by a report from the defendant. Eh. And we know that the defendant left the room, climbed the stairs, and made that phone call from the first floor of the Borscht Bowl Club. Ah. So explain how you kept your eyes on the defendant when he left the room entirely. Eh. The man who picked up a bottle and swung it that night wasn't the defendant. Oh. Showdown time. You dirty cheat! Check his pockets, now! It's gone! The card's gone! You lose. Ah! Oh! Just then, Smith grabbed the bottle from next to right. And he hit me! You... some master of cheating you turned out to be! When I came to, the victim was already dead. Is that it? That's why I couldn't reveal who I really was. If it came out that I was in league with Smith, I'd be a suspect for sure. Well, where does this leave us? Madness. This is madness. I'm dreaming. It must have been me who was hit with a bottle, and I'm imagining all of this. It appears our prosecution is at his wit's end. And frankly, I can't blame him. Mr. Gavin, what do you think about this turn of events? M Mr. Gavin, sir? I believe that, as the defense in this case, we are compelled to call Mr. Orley a... or Miss Orley a big, fat liar. What? Three were in that room the night of the murder, the defendant, the victim, and her. And she has a motive. A motive? Her plot foiled, the witness got into an argument with her client, Mr. Smith. In the denouement, that argument was murder. What? I, I didn't. I'm no killer. It's a trap. Someone's trying to frame me. <laughs> what tangled webs we weave when we practice to deceive. So tangled, we catch ourselves in the process. M Mr. Wright? Such a hasty conclusion. It's not like you, Christoph Gavin. What are you saying? Why not consider the other possibility? That there was another person in the room at the time of the murder. Right, like Mr. Wright was saying before recess. A single card was swapped into the victim's hand after the murder, and the one who swapped the card didn't know two colors of cards were being used. A fourth person. Ah, this theory again! Oh, for a fourth person doesn't exist! Indeed. That's why I decided to bring this case to court. Here, where there's no escape, and no chance for deception. The perfect place to catch the real criminal. The re real criminal? And we're in luck. A clue to the real criminal's identity was kindly provided for us. And right at the beginning of the trial, no less. W what Apollo, perhaps you know what I'm talking about. Um, sorry. Remember what I said. The fourth person who swapped the cards made one critical error. He or she wasn't considering the color on the backs of the cards. Right. But how could such an obvious mistake occur? The cards used for the last game were red. Yet, yeah, there is one person here, in our court, who thought those cards were blue. Yeah, I had that impression too, but why? Well, Apollo? Think you can figure out who it was? It's not me, I swear! Who is this fourth person? Why do I always get put on the spot like this? I mean, I know. Let's hear what the defense has to say. Who was it? Who thought the cards used in the final game were blue? It was, uh, 
Christoph Gavin. <laughs> He's the one who said that. As I expected, your eyes and ears are as sharp as your hair. I was right. Christoph Gavin, you were the first fourth person that night. But of course, Mr. Gavin knows the colors of the cards. How would he? As you can see, the photo of the crime scene is black and white. You can't tell which of the cards are blue. The ones on the floor or the table. But, but look, you can see the colors in this photo. Yes, but when he said the cards were blue, it was well before this evidence came to light. It is true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. It was only that, a game, in the purest sense. A competition, Your Honor. Not a competition? Yes, a test of wits, a silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs wreathed in blue flame, know its final outcome. Well, Christoph? Mr. Gavin? Mr. Gavin? Is something the matter? Hmm? N no, nothing. Excuse me. It was just so sudden. Right? You aren't seriously accusing me, are you? Oh, Christoph? You know, even I'd never take a joke this far. This has gone beyond ridiculous, beyond dumb. This is insanity. The defendant accusing his own defense attorney of murder? I assure you, I'm quite sane. But what possible connection could Mr. Gavin have to the victim? I wasn't aware that I had a connection to Mr. Smith either. Yes, but Mr. Gavin and the victim have never even met. Well, what if they have? Huh? There's a possibility, after all. They may have met that night, before the game started. What are you suggesting? Is this the truth Mr. Wright was staying silent about? Well, only one thing to do. Mr. Wright, the defense would like to request that you testify to the- The defense would like to request no such thing. Mr. Gavin? Testimonies must relate to the case. How could anything happening before that game of poker be related? I'm not sure I follow, Mr. Gavin. As I explained before, the defense believes that Miss Orley... Am I to assume you speak for Mr. Justice in this? He's the defense, not you. Huh? Mr. Justice, the matter of Mr. Wright's testimony is up to you. Oh, okay. Um, does the court, in your opinion, need to hear Mr. Wright's testimony? Yes. This was Mr. Wright's strategy. He was planning this all along, and I intend to see it through. The defense would like to request that Mr. Wright testify to the court. And to justice, you would betray me, your teacher. I'm sorry, Mr. Gavin. This isn't about loyalty. This is about the truth. Uh, very well, the defendant, Mr. Wright, will take the stand, please. Witness testimony. That evening, Christoph and I had dinner. We sat at the table in this photograph. Shady Smith walked in five minutes after Christoph left. When the trap failed, Smith hit the waitress. The girl was not cold, and Smith was uncontrollable. I left to call the police. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. That's when I made another phone call to defense attorney Gavin. Mr. Gavin, you were at the Borscht Bowl Club the night of the murder? I dined with him rather frequently. And he talked to the dreaded on the phone directly after the murder? Quite against my will, I had become involved in a murder. I thought I might be in need of a lawyer, so I called him. You were planning this all along, weren't you, right? Just because you wanted to drag me into your little murder trial. The only thing I want is the truth. As I did back then, and now. I thought my office was doing you a favor when we took on your defense. It appears that I was wrong. Very well. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Justice. Hey, sir? He's lying. You're going to expose him. Uh... Understood, sir. Mr. Gavin reverses Mr. Wright. This can't end well. Why can't I have a normal trial? Cross-examination. 
All right, dinner. We sit at the table. You had dinner with Mr. Gavin? Yes, he dines with me at the Boris Bowl Club quite frequently. We were enjoying a usual dinner at our usual spot, as usual. Usual. I always eat at the table closest to the piano. I see! Where Mr. Smith was sitting. So the plates and such on the table were from your dinner? Indeed. The remnants of my meal with Kristoff. We dined for two hours, then Kristoff left. After that? See, Shady Smith walked in. Five minutes? So the two of them could have passed in the restaurant during that time? That would have been a fateful encounter, to be sure. <laughs> oh, Mr. Wright. What was it you said? Christoph Gavin and Shady Smith may have met. I believe I did say that. Here I was, all nervous about this meeting. And now we hear they just passed in the hall? Hmm. That does seem a little weak as a pretense for murder. Oh, it would be, if that were all that really happened. Come on, Mr. Wright. What are you hiding this time? The trap failed, Smith hit the waitress. About this failed trap, this is the same trap that Miss Olga Orley mentioned? Right, yeah, the plan, elegant, really. The trap, plant a card in Wright's pocket beforehand, yeah. Their hands were revealed, Smith would call, yeah. Yep. The whole deal was swapping the cards. Mm-hmm. And it was going to ruin the legend of Phoenix Wright. Yes. A harmless prank, in essence. It was by a quirk of fate that I happened to discover it. A quirk? I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. The card she planted. Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was the Five of Hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card before the game. Disposed? Where? There was an empty bottle of grape juice I'd been drinking right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. An empty bottle of grape juice? The murder weapon? Yes, I rolled it up and shoved it in. The colored glass makes it hard to see. Hmm, a battle of wits between the deceiver and the would-be deceived. That sounds like terrific drama. The card inside the murder weapon, that's strange. Did the police miss it in their investigation? Maybe I'll take a look. A glass of color. Yes. Yes. Let's see, can we see? I don't see a card in there. Nope. Mr. Wright, the poker head of courtroom number three approves of this battle of wits. Please revise your testimony with this new information. I discovered the trap during the game and disposed of the card in the bottle. It's not in there, though. Objection! Um, Mr. Wright, if I may? Yes? I've examined the bottle, and I don't see any card in here. Hmm? No? What, Mr. Wright? Surely is that isn't all you have to say for yourself. I can't say that I know what happened to the card. I did put it in that bottle, however. Huh? Perhaps a fifth person came and took it out? Oh, and a sixth person could have helped. Mr. Gavin, Mr. Wright is your client. My apologies, Your Honor. I won't have you disparaging our investigation either. We looked inside that bottle. There was nothing. So what's going on? Is Mr. Wright hoodwinking us again? Or did the car just disappear? In any case, please continue the cross-examination. I'm afraid decisive contradictions call for decisive evidence. Oh. Push him harder, Justice. Break him. It's just you and the witness in the ring. Go for the KO. Uh, why do I get the feeling we're not on our client's side anymore? At dinner, we sit at the table. Discovered the trap. The girl was knocked out cold, and Smith was uncontrollable. When I returned, he was dead. I made another phone call to defense attorney Gavin. Got it. Okay. Um. 
Wait a minute. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. The girl was knocked out cold, and Smith was uncontrollable. Okay. Is this the truth that Mr. Wright was talking about? Justice, you know what you have to do. He's lying. Expose him. Now! Yes, sir. I have to think, what's Mr. Wright trying to tell me with this testimony? The truth has to be in there somewhere. Yep. Evening. Shady Smith walked in. And it turned he was dead. Okay. You made the call to the police from the first floor of the restaurant, correct? Exactly. Cell phones don't get a signal down in the hideout. Was anyone else on the first floor at that time? Not a soul. It was the middle of the night, after all. So there, in the darkened restaurant, I called the cops. After making the call, I returned to the hideout. It didn't seem right to leave the injured waitress alone. When I returned, he was dead. Blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. And when you returned, the victim was already... Dead, yes. I'll admit, I was a little startled when I walked in. A, a little? He was bleeding from his forehead, after all. I guess I'd be startled, too, if I walked in on a scene like that. That's when I made another phone call to Defense Attorney Gavin. Could you explain why you called Mr. Gavin? I was obviously gotten involved in a rather sticky affair, and then I figured Christoph's law offices would give me a friend rate for my defense fees. Ah, uh, glad to hear you intend to pay. Oh, I'll pay in full, Christoph. It was I who got you involved, after all. You may find the price of your defense quite high, my good friend. Quite high. Is this true? Okay, we already got that. Mm hmm Okay, what? Right. When I returned, he was dead. Hang on a minute. Blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. Can I? There's that, but in the initial picture, his hat was on and you can't see that, right? That's the thing that comes to mind as a contradiction. He wouldn't have known that unless he opened the, he uh, looked at the guy's hat. I've been thinking that's a contradiction. Objection! No? This evidence clearly reveals a contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are the evidence in the statement just now related? They aren't, are they? Not at all. Mr. Justice, please think the facts over before making accusations. I don't think that would be any points with the judge. Okay. Hmm. So that's not the contradiction? That's interesting. Hmm. Or, wait, do I have this wrong? Should I present this photo? Maybe that's it. Objection! There we go, got it, okay. Mr. Wright, if I may? Yes? Take a look at this photograph of the crime scene. See the victim here? He's wearing a hat. I wouldn't think you could see blood on his forehead. Good point. Justice. Next time you point out an inconsistency, put a little more oomph into it. Mr. Wright, can you explain this to the court? Uh, I forgot to mention something. I was the one who put that hat on his head. Huh? You? You put the hat on the dead man's head? He wore it through our entire poker game. After calling the police, when I returned to the scene, his head was in full view. Shining bright, just like in this photograph. And... I picked up his hat off the floor and put it on his head. Why would you do a thing like that? All I can say is... I'm sorry. But that's the only thing I touched at the crime scene. So, Miss Orley didn't see it? It being the victim's... Uh, his head? I think not. She was out cold. I believe I was the only one who witnessed his head. Ah, here we go again. Mr. Gavin? <clears throat> Pardon. It just seems that our client is determined to lie his way through this case. Hmm. Hey, he's still our client. 
Isn't he? I believe that's enough of that. Uh, Mr. Gavin? This witness's testimony is more like a travesty. It's riddled with lies. I'm beginning to see how you came to lose your attorney's badge seven years ago. Well... You certainly have a unique way of treating your clients, Kristoff. I never knew. I believe it was you who threw the first stone. Mr. Wright, if you intend to ever tell the truth about this case, it's now or never. Don't be misled. I haven't told a single lie here. Uh-huh. When I noticed the trap, I put the card in the bottle to dispose of it. And when I put the hat on the victim's head, let's just say I had a reason for doing that as well. Uh, a reason? That reason is right here. Your cell phone? That night, recall that I spoke with defense attorney Gavin after calling the police. Just in case, I recorded our conversation. What's this? Now that we're all here, I see no reason why I shouldn't play it back for the court. Kristoff, I seem to be in a bit of trouble. What's this? Game not going well? Something like that. The gentleman who challenged you. He turned out to be good. He turned out to be dead. Someone hit him. Hard. You mean someone cracked that flawless bone china pate? It wasn't you, was it? Me? Please. The cop should be here any minute. I'm in your hands, should it come to that. Bone china plate? A kind of porcelain, very smooth and shiny, and not plate, but pate. I believe he was referring to a certain gentleman's balding forehead. Hmm, the court appreciates the defendant's discretion in not indicating my forehead. Wait a second. Something's not right about that phone call. So, after Mr. Gavin ate dinner with you, he left the Borscht Bull Club? Most certainly. Then, then how did he know? When did he see this bone china pate? Oh, that's right! Yes, that was when I began to see my good friend in a different light. Troubled, I returned to the crime scene. And when I spotted Mr. Smith's head again, I realized exactly what was wrong. Well, Mr. Gavin, the stage has been set. Perhaps you would like to explain this to the court. Exactly how did you come by your privileged knowledge of the victim's head? So, this is your reason. The reason why you put the victim's hat back on. Your point, Mr. Gavin? It's come down to this, has it, Phoenix Wright? Order! I will have order! Mr. Payne! Yes, Your Honor? I believe this court has been left with no other choice. Are you prepared to hear Defense Attorney Gavin's testimony? Uh, 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 well, Mr. Prosecutor, I... Very well, we'll break for ten minutes. After which Mr. Gavin will take the stand for a cross-examination. Are we all clear on that? Crystal clear, Your Honor. Very well, this may will be the final recess for the day. Right. April 20th, 2.32 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Mr. Gavin and Mr. Wright are both in the judge's chamber. Who would have thought today would turn out like this? May I? Huh? What? Hello, sir. Please, pick a card. Uh, wh what's all this about? Uh, is this one okay? Excellent. I have a message for you. The last hand is about to be played. You'll need a trump card to make it. A trump card? The card you have chosen is magical. Use it wisely, and the game is yours. That's all. An ace? Where do I remember that card from? Mr. Smith's hand has three aces. Ah, yep. That's the ace. The missing ace. It was cheating. Mm-hmm. She swore there was cheating. Missing fifth ace. Wait, this blotch of red. Is this blood? I somehow actually feel bad for Mr. Payne here. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, this is probably one of the worst, uh, situations he's ever been in. You have your trump card. Now it's up to you to cut the deck and draw the truth. My father's fate is in your hands. I know you can do it. This bloodstained card is my trump card for finding the truth? 
I fell deep into thought as my mind raced to understand what this all meant. A girl. I'd seen her recently, but where? That's when I made the connection. Bloody Ace added to the court record. April 20th, 2.45 p.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Court will now reconvene. Defense Attorney Christoph Gavin, will you please take the stand? Now then, if you would, Mr. Payne. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, will Mr. Uh, the witness state his name and occupation? Is this farce necessary, Your Honor? Uh, believe me, far stranger things have gone on in this courtroom. Fine. I'll play along. Uh, first, there's one thing we need to have made clear. How did you know about the secret beneath the victim's hat? My secret? I'm guessing he means the fact that Mr. Smith was bald. Forgive my curiosity, but what is it about this fellow's head? Your Honor seems to have an inordinate interest in it. I wouldn't call it inordinate, Mr. Gavin. Oh, it's the Phoenix Wright objection theme. M Mr. Wright. What do you think you're doing, Wright? Wow, things sure look different from the other side. You know what I mean, Apollo? Speaking of looking from the other side, let's consider something for a second. The victim wore that hat all night, never once taking it off, except for that one time. That one time being the instant he was hit. Oh! When Mr. Wright returned from reporting the crime, the hat was lying on the floor. Mr. Wright picked it up and placed it on the victim's head. In other words, in order to have seen Mr. Smith's bald head, he would have had to have been there in the hideout at the time of the crime. In other words, I must be the real killer, is what you're trying to say. Not bad, Apollo. <laughs> Phoenix teleports behind your defense attorney's desk. Nothing personnel, Gavin. Yep. Hold steel, the attorney. <laughs> Mr. Gavin? I'm afraid that I haven't been entirely honest with the court. What? Oh, I assure you, I had the noblest of intentions. I did it all to protect my client, Mr. Wright. Huh? Yet, I'm afraid in the current situation, I see little reason to hide anything. Very well. Allow me to tell you the truth of what happened that night. Well, finally, you may begin your testimony. Tell us, how were you involved in the events of that fateful night? Witness testimony. The rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. It must have been right after the murder took place. The victim was dead, as he appears in the photo. A bald head, an unconscious girl, and right, holding a bottle in his hand. I sensed that was not the best place for me to be at the time, and so I left. And that's when the call came from Wright. So, you witnessed the murder? For better or worse, I missed the actual moment of the deed. Mm -mm. Mr. Gavin, may I remind you that you are on Mr. Wright's defense team? Your testimony is clearly disadvantageous to your client. What else could I say? I'm standing on the witness stand, after all. So you are, Mr. Gavin. Mm -hmm. And you had to testify as you just did. You had to tell them you saw the scene of the crime through that little window. Uh, Mr. Wright? You had to say that, because that was the only probable window of opportunity, right, Apollo? Oh. Mr. Wright, the defense should do the cross-examination, not the defendant. Mr. Justice, are you prepared? Yes, Your Honor. I can't believe I'm going up against Mr. Gavin. This trial is getting weirder and weirder. Let's see, the rage troubled me. That man, you mean Mr. Smith? 
He was different from the other customers, his aura, shall we say. I knew he was a serious poker player, but it was more than that. So then you knew the true nature of your client's job? Of course, but I also knew he wasn't engaged in gambling, which would be illegal. Well, it makes sense that he'd know. They were friends, after all. Word for my friend, I returned to the club. You see, I feared this Mr. Smith might be someone coming to settle an old score. I see. What happened then? Went down to the basement and peeked into the little window. Okay. The little window? You mean the one that used to keep watch up the stairs? Yes, a relic of the ancient past. The Black Marketeers used it, I believe. Why did you go through the trouble of peeking in through the window? Wouldn't it have been easier to just open the door and go into the room? I didn't want to upset Wright, you see. Upset Mr. Wright? Yes. What if my fears had been unfounded? I'd be walking in on their match. Bad form, to say the least. Hmm, so far everything he's saying makes sense. Must have been right after the murder took place. How do you know it was right after the murder? Really? No need to shout, Justice. Ugh. I was just getting to that part in my testimony. Ah, there he is. The coolest defense in the West we know and love. Even when you're standing up there on the witness stand, some things never change. I was afraid you'd change too, right? But you haven't. You and that overbearing personality of yours. With friends like these, who needs enemies? The victim was dead as he appears in the photo. By photo, you mean the second photograph of the crime scene? Precisely. You see, he wasn't wearing his hat then. I saw his head when he was dead. And then Mr. Wright came along and replaced his hat? Can you describe the scene of the crime for us? See, a bald head, an unconscious girl, and Wright holding a bottle in his hand. Those were the only three at the scene of the crime? Yes, as far as I saw, at least. Then we're back where we started. The killer was the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Who else could it have been? But why didn't you talk to the police? Two reasons. First, I didn't actually witness the very moment of the crime. Second, my office was asked to defend Wright, even after seeing what I had seen. I couldn't abandon my friend. Hmm. There must have been someone else there at the moment of the crime. Justice, I just said I saw no one. Not a soul. But that goes against what Mr. Wright said. Ah, yes, this mysterious fourth person. Who would conveniently be the real killer, I suppose. I'm glad to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose a question, then. Tell me, what possible reason did the real killer have to swap cards in the victim's hand? Huh? Hmm? Perhaps you can show us a reason why such a thing would be necessary. How can I show something I can't find myself? Remember, Apollo, the card that was swapped out was the fifth ace. The fifth ace, right. Well, Mr. Justice, the question of why the killer would swap out a card has been raised. Um, we have the card. Let's look at it. And it's got a red back. And there's a blood stain on it. A single drop of blood marks the front of the card. Okay. Is there anything... No. The fifth ace is a great name for a bar. It is, actually. That would be a really good name for a bar. Yeah. Can you point to a reason? Um, can we? I don't know. Um, hang on. I mean, is it because there has, it has blood on it? Oh, what if it wasn't... Oh, yeah, let's show the card. It's now or never. The defense would like to present evidence to the court. Evidence showing the reason why a card was swapped out. Then go ahead and point out your reason, Mr. Justice. Why did the killer take the fifth ace? Because it had blood on it. My reason is, uh, this. Is that a, an ace? 
Why? Why? It's got blood on it! Right next to the spade! What? This is insane! Why wasn't I told about this? Why? Could this be? Could this be the missing fifth ace? In inconceivable. How could you? What are you doing with that card? Um, well, that's the thing. Why is Mr. Kevin so upset? It's just a fishy card from some fishy girl. Oh, that card? It's mine. That is, I picked it up at the Borscht Bowl Club the night after the murder had occurred. I gave it to my daughter. Cards are her stock and trade, after all. N no, impossible, unacceptable. The court can't accept this evidence. It's a fraud. A fraud? How can you be so sure? Wh what? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. The real killer. <sighs> Allow me to elaborate. What if this trace of blood was the reason? The reason for... For the killer to take the card from the scene of the crime. Where are you going with this? I'll take another look at the photo at, and at the victim's head. At the moment of the crime, his hat fell to the floor, and a trickle of blood ran from his forehead down to the back of his head. Couldn't a drop of that blood have fallen on one of the cards? I suppose. The killer then took the card to hide the blood. Regardless, that evidence is non-permissible. Oh? Right. Regardless of how you wasted the last seven years, you used to be a lawyer. You know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence. Oh, uh, we can discuss the finer points of our legal system later. What's important now is that I've answered your question. What are you talking about? You wanted to know why the killer would have taken a card from the crime scene. And now, well, I've told you. That one drop of blood would have been decisive evidence, you see. Objection. This is baseless conjecture. Baseless! Oh, I assure you, it's quite based. Oh, baby. Yes. This is an infamous line from this game, by the way. Wh what? It's amazing, really, how a single drop of blood on a single card can lead us to the truth. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo? Uh, yes? Try picturing the scene of the crime. In your head. Oh, we're going 3D on this to show off. The murder took place in the hideout. The body of the luckless victim was found at the poker table. And before the killer swamped a card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood on it in the victim's hand. Given this, there is one decisive problem with this scene. Well, what is it? Let's keep it simple, shall we? Given that there was a drop of blood on the card, whose position is in this diagram doesn't fit? The victim? The killers? The witnesses? The second witnesses? Whose position doesn't fit with the bloody card? Um... Hang on. Alright, let's keep it. There's... Let me think about this. So there was... Yeah, and before... The killer swapped a card out. Right. The body of the luckless victim was found at the table, and before the killer swapped a card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood on it. In the victim's hand. Given this, there is one decisive problem. Whose position is not... does not fit? Well... Ah, hang on. Let's think about this. Orly, Orly was knocked out. Kristoff supposedly is, was in there looking through the window. The killer was there in the chair. And the victim, as we know from the crime scene photo, was leaned backwards. So if the blood was dropping on the on the card, he would not have been leaned backwards. 
Yeah, that's the problem. So the victim's position is the problem. Well, isn't it the victim's position that's the problem? I don't follow your logic here, Mr. Justice. Well, look. The victim was struck on the head, sending him back on his chair. You'd think any blood would fall behind the body, not under the table in front of him. Ah! Take a look at the photo again. If he bled in this position, the photo would fall on the floor, not on the cards. Why, that's right! So what does this mean? Incidentally, we were sitting in swivel chairs. Swivel chairs? Oh, man. Apollo, try turning the chair around. Okay. The chair was facing the other way? It would have to be. Aha! Uh -huh. So we have to assume that at the time of the murder, the victim's chair was facing away from the table. When Mr. Wright returned from informing the police, which way was the chair facing? When I came back to the room, the body was facing as seen in this photo. That would mean the killer turned the chair back around. Let's take the next step. Look at the diagram once more. We know now the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder. But this creates another significant contradiction. But, uh, again? Let's test your reasoning skills again, shall we? Apollo, whose location on this diagram contradicts our new understanding of the crime scene? <laughs> yes. The victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses? Whose location creates a contradiction if the victim was facing away? Um... Oh, oh, oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm dumb. <laughs> like, I, oh, I gotta think about this for a second. No, it's the killer, obviously. The victim was struck from the front, correct? Indeed. Well, wouldn't it be hard for the killer to hit him from the front? Sitting where his indicator currently is? I would think it'd be quite hard, yes. Yes, but what you're saying makes no sense. Why would the victim suddenly turn to face the wall in the middle of a game? I believe a sufficient reason will soon come to light. What? There's something in this diagram that makes far less sense, actually. Look again at the diagram. Apollo, if the victim was struck while he was sitting as shown here, where would his assailant be standing? Try marking it on the diagram. What? But there's no room to put a mark where the killer should be. Don't worry. Let's think it through and see what we find. We know the victim was facing toward the wall at the time of the crime. That's the only thing we know for sure. Try to forget about everything else. Where would the killer have to be standing to strike our victim from the front? Well, right... there. The killer had to be standing, well, the uh, here! You get points for flair, but that's about all you get. Uh, I thought I was onto something there, too. I hardly need to point out that standing there would be impossible. The victim is facing a solid cupboard! Or are you claiming the killer climbed the cupboard and hit him from above? It's simple logic, really. If this was the only place the killer could have been standing, then that means that at the very moment of the crime... Wait, I know! At the moment of the crime, the cupboard wa wasn't there! What's this now?! I mean, that's the only explanation. Right, Mr. Gavin? Your Honor, I have a suggestion for the defense. We should arrange to examine the cupboard in the hideout immediately! Uh, Bailiff, send a team to the crime scene immediately. Have them try to move the cupboard. Uh, Your Honor. What? There's one more thing your men should look for. Please give this to the bailiff. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see. You do belong in the courtroom after all, Mr. Wright. I do my best. But let's forge ahead here while we wait. Look at the diagram once again. It's been changed. If the killer was standing here at the time of the crime, then this cupboard wasn't here, which means... Apollo, try moving the cupboard. Okay. Thank you. As you can see, the cupboard was the problem. At the time of the murder, it has to have been as shown here. 
Now everything is in place to reconstruct the moment of the crime. Oh my. What's this? What, what is it now? A look at the diagram of the crime scene once more. It appears we've found yet another contradiction. What I believe to be the final contradiction, in fact. Huh? Oh dang! Notice something, Apollo? Our line of deduction is rapidly approaching its logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Justice, please point to the new contradicting indicator. It is the, the victim, the killer, the witness, the second witness. Which indicator in this crime contradicts what we know about the crime? Second witness couldn't have seen anything. Um, about this cupboard, are we all okay with assuming it was moved? Sure, why not? Well, if it was, something really doesn't fit. The cupboard would completely cover up the window to the stairs. Oh! That's right. Someone standing outside wouldn't be able to see in. Someone like Mr. Gavin. What? What did you say? Oh, is the coolest defense in the West losing his cool? <laughs> Don't expect me to play along with your little game, right? It's only a game until someone gets killed, Mr. Gavin. And someone was, while the window to that room was blocked by a cupboard. So, Mr. Gavin, perhaps you'd like to explain to the court exactly where did you witness the crime scene from? <laughs> Excuse me, Your Honor. Order! This is a court of law and I will have order! We, we just now received word from our investigative team at the Borscht Bolt Club. They've examined the cupboard in the hideout, Your Honor. Oh, and what did they find? Well, Your Honor, it turns out there's a secret passage behind it. What?! Ah, yes. I believe I mentioned something of the sort before. This is one of the tricks to the room many of our regulars know about. I do remember him saying something about that now that he mentions it. A secret passage is a handy thing to have when you're engaged in any legal goings-on. Never know when you might need to duck away from the eyes of the law. So, the room has a secret passage? Where does it go? The other side connects to the restaurant above. The underworld bosses could get away from the cops. And enjoy a cold bowl of borscht, no doubt. Just like our killer. You see where our line of simple deductive reasoning has led us, Apollo? I see it, but I don't believe it. That girl wasn't kidding when she said I needed this trump card for the last hand. At the time of the murder, the witness was blocked in the victim's hat. It was only off his head for the few minutes between Mr. Smith's murder and Mr. Wright's return from calling the cops. In other words, the only place anyone could have seen the victim's bald head was from inside the hideout. Well, Mr. Gavin? Come on, say something. Hmm... Dare I ask what really happened that night? Actually, I think we can probably figure it out ourselves at this point. That night, for whatever reason, our killer had a date with Mr. Smith. A date with destiny. There he crouched, hidden in the secret passageway behind the cupboard holding his breath, waiting for just the right moment. Then the chance came, and he took it. Why did you do that? Wait here, I'll get help. Miss Olga Orley was out cold, struck by Mr. Smith. But his time was soon to come. Mr. Wright went upstairs to call the cops leaving Mr. Shady Smith alone in the hideout with the unconscious dealer. Then our killer stepped out from the secret passage and into the hideout. The victim must have heard the cupboard slanting aside. He wheeled his chair around to look, and... After the deed was done, the criminal must have seen the blood on the card. He would have, of course, realized the need to destroy the evidence. That single spot of blood told the whole story of the crime. Too bad for him he didn't linger any longer in the hideout that night. If he had, he might have noticed the cards on the floor. And the fact that they were all red. <laughs> A 
Well, it seems this trial has taken yet another turn. I'm truly, truly sorry I had to see this day come, Mr. Gavin. Mr. Gavin? Mr. Payne? Yeah! Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor? The prosecution will continue its investigation. As for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the defendant, he is hereby cleared of all suspicion. <laughs> believe me when I say that I don't believe this is happening, Mr. Gavin. But I'm afraid circumstances call for me to issue a warrant for your arrest immediately. Oh, no need to apologize. I rather enjoyed myself. It's not every day you get to witness a legendary attorney's dirty tactics firsthand. Your point, Mr. Gavin? Frankly, Your Honor, I'm shocked that a person of your caliber will be taken in by such a low-grade parlor trick. Um, excuse me? The defendant is cleared of all suspicion. This is hardly the time for jokes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright hasn't proven anyone's guilt or innocence here. What he has done is use illegal evidence to put the blame on someone else. And not just anyone else, but me, his own defense attorney. Uh, illegal evidence? Let me ask you, Mr. Gavin, is there still any reason at present to suspect me of wrongdoing? Of course, this bottle, for instance. The bottle of grape juice Mr. Wright was drinking? How do you intend to explain away the fingerprints on the murder weapon? And not just any fingerprints. Am I right, Mr. Payne? Actually, yes, the fingerprints on the bottle were uh, upside down. I seem to recall this being an issue earlier. The court in this case demand an explanation. I can think of only one reason why one would hold a bottle upside down, and that is to hit someone with the bottom of the bottle. Well, Your Honor? Um. Ah, see how the caught fish squirms to the last. Well, Apollo? Uh, yes? Your boss seems awfully concerned about this bottle still, but I'm sure you can come up with a suitable explanation. Just like that. Uh, yeah. Just like what? Why would anyone grab a bottle upside down other than to... <laughs> Don't let him trick you into thinking his explanation is the only legitimate one. Um, is there really another? Take another look at the court record. I believe you'll find a simple answer there, in plain sight. How about you just say the answer in plain words? It would be hasty to deliver a verdict with unanswered questions, indeed. Well, Mr. Justice? Mr. Gavin said that the court in this case demand an explanation. Don't worry. Justice won't leave until justice is done. Uh, perhaps the defense would care to enlighten the court? What evidence do you have to explain why the fingerprints on the bottle are upside down? Um... Where, where is it where he said that he, um... Let me see, hang on a second. Um, let's see. So there's the bottle. And then that's his autopsy. There's the crime photo. So let's see, it's grape juice bottle used as the murder weapon. Mr. Wright's prints are on it upside down. And then they also talked about how it's his favorite drink, right? And then there's a cell phone. Yeah. What, what's this on the back? Wow, the battery is being held in with a piece of tape. He should just buy a new one. Maybe he can't afford it. Or he just doesn't care. I wonder if he still has the Steel Samurai theme as his ringtone. We'll have to find out. And there's the bottle in the picture. Yeah. So hang on a second. The bottles are down there. Wait a minute. Yeah, if 
the most convenient way, if he's sitting there at the piano, the most convenient way to reach down and grab that bottle would be from the neck. Because it would be awkward. Yeah, you would have to really like extend your wrist to get it the other way. So yeah, this picture is what, yeah, this is the definitive proof. It's actually easier to show you than explain, Your Honor. Place that bottle on the floor next to your chair. Excuse me? On the floor? Yes, now reach down and pick it up without getting out of your chair. Ah! See? You naturally go to pick up the bottle by its neck with your fingers upside down. Look at this photograph taken on the night of the murder. The defendant, Mr. Wright, sat here playing piano bottles of grape juice on the floor to the side of his piano bench. He would have naturally picked up the bottles upside down several times. Wow! I can't believe it was that simple! Recall our dinner that evening, Christoph. I was drinking my usual juice then, too. Basically, you used the bottle on the table to do the deed, but then you must have remembered. So you went and picked up one of the bottles from under the piano, and you switched the bottles. You took one of Mr. Wright's bottles and made it look like the murder weapon. Order! 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 What do you have to say to these charges, Mr. Gavin? Fascinating. So this is the legendary attorney's famed tactic of misdirection. What? You claim that I switched the bottle. Where is your proof? Proof? Well, that's, uh... As I thought. More baseless conjecture. I'm afraid your bottle of proof is quite empty. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Your Honor, when you initiated the investigation of the hideout earlier, do you recall I requested an additional investigation? Uh, yes. I have your memo about that here. Retrieve the bottles from under the piano at the Borscht Bowl Club. And here's one of the bottles in question. Hm. What, are you going to dust that for fingerprints, too? I would be surprised if any were on that, but his. Mr. Gavin probably wouldn't make such a novice mistake, true. That bottle won't bear a trace of anything. Say, Apollo? Uh, yes? Why don't you go ahead and examine that bottle? But why? Just humor me. Mr. Wright, that bottle will solve this case once and for all. What? That's some bottle. Oh, look what's in it. A crumpled up card. Oh, there's something inside the bottle. What's this? The card, it can't be. Recall that unpleasant woman's testimony for a moment? Uh, Miss Olga Orly? Yes, our little swindling Divotchka. That night I planted the card. How did you put that card inside my bottle, David? Like, yes! <laughs> you are a demon, Mr. Wright. You are a demon. Mr. Wright lost the last hand just like he was supposed to. Smith searched him. But the planet card was gone. The trap failed. Wait, this isn't... You're telling me that this is the planted card you disposed of? The one you mentioned in this piece of testimony? I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. Yep. Yes, yeah, so I snuck a peek at it and found it was the Five of Hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of that card before the game. Yeah. An empty bottle of grape juice. Yeah, he stuck it in there. I actually was thinking initially that was one of the reasons why his fingerprints were on the bottle the way it was, but... Let's see, the Five of Hearts. This is the card. The bottles were swapped. And the only one who could have done that was the fourth person in the club that night. You. Mr. Christoph Gavin. That is all.
The sheer idea of revenge, Phoenix Wright. Revenge? Revenge for the events that took away your attorney's badge seven years ago. My past is like my logic. Straight and true. Nothing's changed. All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. Fine. I'm glad we could have this little tete-a-tete, -tete, right? This... this is insane! What about me? Don't I get to prosecute anyone? <laughs> poor... poor pain. And I believe this time we've finally come to the end of our trial. Mr. Payne, do you have any a report for us on Christoph Gavin? He's admitted everything. We're processing his arrest now. I see. Still, one has to wonder why he would do such a thing. He didn't even have a connection to the victim, did he? Uh, none that we know of. Mr. Wright, have you anything to add? I'm afraid I can't shed any more light on the matter. About this victim, Mr. Shady Smith. His occupation was listed as traveler, an odd profession to be sure, and that's all we know about it. I'll arrange a follow-up investigation, Your Honor. Good. Mr. Wright? Yes? Seven years, and you still haven't lost your touch. Christoph Gavin was a man with much significance for me, both as a friend and a lawyer. He was extremely talented, to be sure. I needed two things before I could confront him. The first was a place where no injustice would be tolerated, this courtroom. The second was a man who would tolerate no injustice. In other words, a defense attorney. You, Apollo. Me? This is a dark time for our legal system. A twisting of justice brought on by our very own initial trial system. We have to set it right. Mr. Wright? Our work lies ahead of us, and I, for one, am looking forward to it. Well, this seems like a good time to announce a verdict. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright, not guilty. Court is adjourned. April 24, 28 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Thanks, Apollo. You came through, just like I thought you would. I'm pretty sure I didn't do a thing in there. It was you who cornered Mr. Get the killer. I couldn't have done it by myself. You sensed it too today, didn't you? Your ability? Ability? Yes, a sensitivity I lack. You'll come to understand it soon enough. Wait, I wonder if he means... The... yeah. So the moment the defendant hit the victim... The touching the back of the neck, he, he can sense the weird vibes. What... what was that, Mr. Wright? You'll have to find the answer to that question yourself. The answer... right. Today was full of questions without answers. Most of them about Mr. Gavin. What possible reason could he have had to commit murder? Perhaps you'll learn that it, that in the days to come. Huh? Wait. You don't know, do you? This locket is the key. Huh? Oh, that reminds me. I met the girl whose picture is in your locket. Your daughter, right? That's right. She's my daughter. You know, you were right about this locket. Huh? I took this off his neck the night he died. But it looks like our dear Russian scam artist saw me. So the truth is, this locket really did belong to him. Wait, but that's perjury! You testified! You said that locket was yours! I said no such thing, actually. Huh? I merely said that it was a locket with my daughter's picture inside. A subtle distinction, but a distinction nonetheless. And it's the truth. Wait, but then why? Why was the victim wearing a locket with a picture of your daughter inside it? 
Sometimes the straightest path of the truth isn't the best one. Give it time. You're still just getting started with your career. Speaking of which, I may be out of a job. I work for Gavin Law Offices, after all. Still can't believe I just saw Mr. Gavin get led away in handcuffs. Apollo? Yes? How about... coming to work for me? Huh? But you mean at the Wright & Co. Law Offices? I mean, there's not a single attorney in my generation that doesn't know it. Uh, I can't imagine that to be true, but... Wait, but didn't you... You're not a... Oh, I turned in my badge, yes. I'm not an attorney anymore. That incident seven years ago. That legendary trial. And at the middle of it all was one man. Phoenix Wright. The case reached its sad conclusion. And he left law for good. Have you ever thought about coming back to the courts? I'm... Not qualified to stand in a court of law, I'm afraid. Didn't you notice in today's trial? There was a single piece of forged evidence. Forged evidence? What are you talking about? I'm talking about evidence that shouldn't have existed. A naughty magician's trick. Hmm. One piece of evidence struck me as odd, it's true. It just seemed, well, too perfect. I'll bet this was the forged evidence. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, blaringly obvious. <laughs> the one that was just handed to us. You mean this, don't you? I got this from your, uh, your, your daughter, Mr. Wright. Yeah, so that card couldn't have been found at the crime scene. Why? Because the killer took it with him when he left. Leaving the wrong card in his place, luckily for us. Yeah, he said the court cannot accept this because it's fraud. Yeah. Yeah, that, that pretty much was a big red flag there. If, if he was the killer, he would know that, but otherwise he wouldn't. My verdict was already handed down seven years ago. Then, you really... Yes, I forged this card. One look at the crime scene should have told you it wasn't real. But, but you can't do something like that and call yourself an attorney. Who's calling themselves an attorney, Apollo? So it's true. The rumor is true. Seven years ago. None of that matters much now, does it? <laughs> I, I punched him. It's your story from here on out, Apollo. Perhaps I can help you turn the next page. My office's address. Drop in, if you like. Mr. Wright. Oh, about your uppercut? Try yelling, take that, next time. I find it packs a little more punch. And Apollo, thanks for today. I had a good time. And with that, Mr. Wright walked out the door. And that's how my first trial ended. A lot of mysteries went unsolved. And at the time, I had no idea they were all related. Every mystery that day, connected by a single thread of logic. I'd find that out soon enough. My name is Apollo Justice, attorney at law, and this is how my story begins. The end of Turnabout Trump. There we go. We will save it. Um, so Turnabout Corner is coming up next, but we don't have a lot of time left before we end for the night. So I think I'm going to call it there and then we will start Turnabout Corner bright and fresh next Saturday. So we'll see you then.